Now we light the candle for the second Sunday in Advent. This is the candle of peace. As we prepare for the coming of Jesus, we remember that Jesus is our hope and our peace. From the prophet Isaiah, For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9, 6-7. And from the Gospel of John, Peace I live with you, leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not let them be afraid. John 14, verse 27. Let's pray. Gracious God, grant that we may find peace as we prepare for our Lord's birth. May divisions in ourselves and in our families be peacefully resolved. May there be peace in our cities and in the countries of our world. Help us to see the paths of peace in our lives and then give us the courage to follow them. Lord, let us remember that you are, you only are the giver of lasting peace and that you are always with us. Amen. Now please stay tuned for a message of peace. Hello, my name is Carmen Little and I'm a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. It is my pleasure to be able to worship with you today. Let us prepare our hearts as we await the coming of our Lord. Let us watch for the one who heard our cries and shouldered the suffering of our world. Let us anticipate the coming of Christ's eternal world with wholeness, reconciliation, and plenty for all. Let us wait in expectation for the day when God's glory is revealed in all its fullness. We begin with prayer. O Holy One, in the season of Advent, we wait for you to break into our worlds unexpectedly. Help us to stay awake, to be aware, to hope against hope. We pray for your peace in this world when you will settle things between nations and make things right between peoples. We pray for you to show us how to simply be advocates for your peace and hope. Help us to know that what we do makes a difference. We pray for the peace you bring within families. We pray for the peace you bring within ourselves. We pray for your peace to come for those who are ill, those who are grieving, those who are struggling, and those who are suffering. We pray for those who are lonely and those who have been devastated by disaster. Surprise us with the possibilities of how your vision of peace and hope might take root and how we might live into this vision of justice and love for all creation. Lord Jesus, come. Amen. One of the things that many people enjoy about Christmas is the nativity scenes. And one of the things I find really poignant about nativity scenes is that they are so peaceful. It's hard to imagine a more peaceful-looking scene than Joseph and Mary with their newborn child surrounded by sheep and shepherds under the midnight sky. We even sing about it in one of the most peaceful Christmas carols ever written. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. We all long for peace in our lives, and yet peace is sadly lacking. People are full of worry and anxiety. Relationships are full of argument and stress. The world is full of conflict and wars. This is where Jesus comes in. Because Jesus is not our only hope, pardon me, because Jesus is our only hope at Christmas. He is our peace. And it is only in Christ that we will ever truly obtain peace on earth. In a 1946 Canadian Parliament debate, someone once said, there will never be agreement at the peace tables of the world or rest in the individual heart until the Prince of Peace reigns supreme in the hearts of men. Part of the Christmas story, part of the Christmas message, is that Jesus brings us peace. When God first sent the angel Gabriel to Mary, he sent Gabriel with a message of peace. We read in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 30. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph 
of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Mary was troubled at the angel's greeting, but the angel spoke words of peace and assurance to her, telling her not to be afraid because God was with her and she had found favor with God. You might wonder, how did Mary find favor with God? She had faith in God and in his promise of the Messiah to come. Like so many Old Testament believers before her, she had faith in Christ before Christ even came. And now God had chosen her to be the vessel through which his son would enter the world. God also sent an angel to Joseph, Mary's husband-to-be. And the angel told Joseph in Matthew chapter 1, She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus means salvation. Jesus, the promised Savior who came to bring us peace with God by saving us from our sins. When John the Baptist was born shortly before Jesus, John's father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied about John. And in his prophecy, he spoke about how John would go before Jesus, preparing the way for this one who would bring us peace with God through the forgiveness of sins. In Luke chapter 1, verses 76 through 79, and you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us, to shine upon those who stir in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. How is it that everyone who puts their faith in Jesus finds peace with God? It is because of what Jesus did at the cross. Jesus was born into this world to die on the cross so that our sins would be forgiven and we could be restored to a right relationship with peace, of peace with God. As we read in Isaiah chapter 53, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon Him, and by His wounds we are healed. We desperately need inner peace, and Jesus came not only to bring peace with God, but also personal peace within ourselves. Sin not only separates us from God, it also brings separation within our own being. We are conflicted, and it can feel like we are constantly fighting anxiety and stress and inner turmoil. Look at the man named Simeon. God had promised Simeon that he would see the Messiah before he died, and the Holy Spirit moved Simeon to go into the temple courts, just as Joseph and Mary were bringing the infant Jesus into the temple. We read in Luke chapter 2 that Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you're now, you now dismiss your agent in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people. Simon is a wonderful example of Jesus bringing personal peace. People sometimes talk about their bucket lists, all the things they would want to do or accomplish before they finish their lives here on earth. Well, apparently, Simeon only had one thing on his bucket list. He wanted to see the Messiah before he died. And when he finally did, when he finally saw Jesus, he praised God, saying, You now dismiss your servant in peace, Simeon embraced Christ, and he was at peace with himself. When you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you not only receive peace with God, you also receive the peace of God to help you through the difficult circumstances of life. When you know Christ, everything can be going crazy around you, and you can still be at peace within yourself. Philippians 4 instructs us, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This wonderful peace of God is only available in and through Jesus Christ.
The Bible says the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Hear these beautiful words of Jesus from John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give peace as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The Christmas story gives us wonderful examples of peace. For example, when Joseph first heard that Mary was pregnant, he considered breaking off his engagement. He must have been terribly hurt and confused, thinking that Mary had been unfaithful to him. But then we read in Matthew chapter 1, after he had considered this, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus, even before he was born, brought peace between Joseph and Mary and kept their marriage from coming apart. We go through many challenges in this life, and one of the most difficult is when our relationships are in turmoil. That's when we need to ask Jesus, the Prince of Peace, to come and bring us peace in our relationships, to intervene, to reconcile, and to restore. We read this about Jesus in Ephesians chapter 2. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. And Jesus came to break down the barriers, to bridge the gaps, to bring people together, and to restore peace to our damaged relationships. As believers in Christ, we are called to follow in his footsteps. As Colossians 3.15 says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. The angels who announced Jesus' birth to the shepherds that first Christmas Eve also proclaimed the peace that Jesus would bring to our planet. We read in Luke chapter 2, Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to whom his favor rests. This is a peace that was prophesied back in the Old Testament book of Isaiah. We read this wonderful prophecy about Jesus back in Isaiah chapter 2. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. And in Isaiah 9, we find these words about who will ultimately bring peace on earth. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. This is a clear prophecy about Jesus who was born as a child who will be called the Prince of Peace and who will one day rule in peace over all the earth. This peace on earth will not only bring an end to war among the nations, it will even extend to nature and the animal kingdom. We read in cha Isaiah chapter 11, The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The goat will feed with the bear, their young will be lay down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy <clears throat> on all my holy mountain, for the mountain will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Jesus truly is the Prince of Peace. The Bible also tells us that Jesus will not only bring peace on earth, but he will bring peace to the whole universe and that he will reconcile all things to himself in heaven and on earth. We read in Colossians 1, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Jesus brings peace with God, peace with self, peace with others, and peace on earth. Without Jesus shedding his blood on the cross, there would be no peace. And without Jesus being born, there would be no cross. 
If your faith is in Christ, then you have peace with God. If your faith is in Christ, then Jesus has not abandoned you, but has come to live in you by his Holy Spirit. And he offers you his peace. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. If your faith is in Christ, then he has given you all you need to do your part in living in peaceful relationships with those around you. And after you have done your part, you may ask Jesus in prayer to work in the other person's heart that you may live in peace. We do not yet have peace on earth, but we have the promise of peace on earth to come, and God has never yet broken a promise. The angels proclaimed to the shepherds that first Christmas Eve, Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Those words of promise still ring in the air this Christmas season as we worship and adore the Lord Jesus, our Savior, the Son of God, the Prince of Peace. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Music